Whew. Sunday night. It's a beautiful night for four fan bases instead of five. Um, <clears throat> as you may know by now, the Florida State Seminoles have been left out of the college football playoff as an unbeaten seed. You know, they are unbeaten. They're the number five team in the nation. They're not number four. They're number five, 13 0. Won the ACC championship. They're out. And this is a year where you see our top four looking like this. You have number one being Michigan. Pretty obvious. Number two, Washington. Pretty obvious. Both are undefeated. Both won their respective conferences easily. Michigan taking care of business, you know, against Iowa. Iowa covered the spread. Iowa didn't even score. I hope all those people that got free drinks uh, at that bar, hopefully they're okay. Hopefully they sobered up, you know, by now because Iowa didn't score. Uh, Washington. Now, Washington didn't exactly take care of business. They did defeat a tough Oregon team a second time and got out of that game with a victory unbeaten in the Pac-12, which has never happened, never really happened, you know, aside from 2010 Oregon, but that was before the Pac-10 became the Pac-12. So, you know, what was... The issue and what was the controversy was who was going to be three and four. You see who three and four are. Number three are those Texas Longhorns, 12 and one, won the Big 12, easily took care of business against Oklahoma State despite losing Xavier Worthy. Um, no idea how long he will be out. And then, of course, number four, it was a toss up at this point. Again, because Oregon had two losses, they lost to Washington Friday night. They were out of the discussion. Ohio State had no games to play. They lost their biggest game of the season to Michigan. They were out of the discussion. I don't know why people were arguing for either of those two teams. Out of the discussion. The discussion, you know, now as we went into the later portions of the day after Texas easily took care of business was Georgia-Alabama. At whatever Florida State was going to do with their third stringer. And, you know, Alabama, resilient. They, they, they once again did the thing in which they, you know, just put up much more of a fight against Georgia. Georgia, you know, tried to counter, but ultimately the counters were not enough. Jalen Milrow was dotting them up. You know, as soon, as soon as you think, you know, Bill Rowe's going to make a big play with his legs, he makes a big play with his arm. As soon as you think he's going to make a play with his arm, he uses his legs against the Georgia defense. And the Georgia defense hasn't been the greatest all season long. And yet again, it, it finally caught up to the dogs that they were not, you know, they were not unbeatable. And they lose to Alabama by three. And thus, you know, after that, of course, Michigan Iowa was the thing, but nobody was really focused on that game. I ended up watching the whole thing anyway, but again, we knew Michigan was going to take care of business against Iowa. I don't think anybody had Iowa winning this game. You know, yeah, that was a phantom, you know, ref call in that game, but honestly, Iowa got past the 50 yard line like twice. So it did not matter. Did not matter what I was going to do. They were not. They were not going to score against Michigan. We knew that. But the curious case was Florida State. What were they going to do with their third stringer, as Tate Rodemeyer was out, and you know, the third stringer was in for them in that game against Louisville. And Louisville decided to you know not only not only mess things up. You know, by completely doing nothing on offense again. You know, you know they just didn't have anything on offense, like absolutely nothing. Like what, 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 what was what was Louisville supposed to do against Brock One? What was I mean? You know that defense. You know held him to what fifty five passing yards. 
So, I mean, you know, Louisville's defense did their thing, but Louisville's offense just had nothing against Florida State's defense. Nothing at all, you know. So Florida State had to rely on the ground game of Torofili and Benson, and ultimately Louisville lost the ACC championship. And again, the question was, was now that Alabama had beaten or, you know, Alabama had beaten Georgia, you know, what in the world was going to happen because Florida State still had to play. So, you know, a lot of questions were, you know, were coming up, do this Alabama, you know, you know, do they deserve to get in and everything like that? And, of course, you know, again, Florida State won. So there are five teams that deserve their shot to get into this thing because they all won their conference. So... I thought the head-to-head would matter, you know, a lot more. And I thought wins and losses would matter a lot more, you know. But ultimately, the safe route was not chosen here of Michigan, Washington, Florida State, and Texas. thought that was the safe route for this committee, I feel. I feel like that's what everybody else had as the safe route. Again, there was no justification for leaving Texas out because they beat Alabama. You can't leave Texas out. The, the thought was maybe just maybe this one time the SEC gets left out of a 14 field. And no, that was not the case. Um, again, the, the, the committee has you know their list of stated reasons why they can leave a team out there again. They're supposed to pick the four best teams, and again, it's never. It's always a weird thing with the committee and everything like that. So you know, it's it's always going to be weird. Next year is going to be even weirder with twelve teams, as you can see. We'll talk about who the New Year's six games are in a minute, but um, yeah. So I can finally go off on the whole twelve team playoff thing, but yeah. Um, Again, the the problem was was that Alabama beat the number one team in the nation, and, but you can't but you can't lead them out. You know, Texas again. Texas beat Alabama, so there was no question at that point that they were going to be in. The problem was Alabama and Florida State at this point. Florida State's unbeaten. Alabama, yes, they had the loss to Texas, but they beat the number one team in the country. Florida State. Doesn't have Jordan Travis. And again, Jordan Travis even was like, you know, I didn't break my leg, man. I, I guarantee you, you know, Florida State would have been in this thing. Again, it's a it's a 22 person game. It's a team game. And again, the, the somebody was going to be mad. One of the one of these teams is going to be mad. It was either going to be Alabama or Florida State was going to be mad. And ultimately the way Florida State has been, you know, yeah, Alabama has had bad games too. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the committee chose Alabama instead of Florida State. Now Florida State will get a consolation prize in the Orange Bowl. So with when well, Tate Rodemaker may come back at some point. But ultimately, again, somebody was going to be mad I have no problems with the first three. Again, I have no problems with the first three teams. Again, you have to factor in the head the head of Texas beating Alabama. Yes, Texas lost to Oklahoma. That was back in October. Yes, Alabama lost to Texas. That was in September. But again, you have to factor in that head to head. That's one thing that has to factor in as the committee selects the four best teams. Injuries are also a factor. You know, again, Jordan Travis probably takes care of business easily with Florida State against Louisville. But, you know, who who says that he could? You know, we don't we don't know that because that didn't happen. He's hurt. He's done for the year. So it it it's mind boggling, but at the same time, you know, the four teams that have played the best are in. And again, it's about what you do for me lately too. Again, Ohio State lost late. You can't lose late. Georgia lost the SC championship. You cannot lose your conference championship game. So, of course, Georgia and Ohio State are going to be out. 
You can't lose late in college football. You cannot lose games late in this sport. We know that. We all know this. So the fact that this will be our final four for the final iteration of the four-team playoff is, well, it's certainly something. It is certainly something. We're going to have some good ones. I, I guarantee you that. Um, so for our New Year's Six, we have the Cotton Bowl with Missouri and Ohio State, the Peach Bowl, Ole Miss, Penn State, the Orange Bowl, again, the consolation prize for our two teams that got left out in Georgia and Florida State. And no, this is not a, a Ohio State, Baylor, TCU situation. Again, it, it's a little bit weirder than that. From 2014, it's a little bit weirder because of how many unbeatens were left. It's it's not it's not 2014 Florida State where Florida State was unbeaten and yet they were the number three team in the country. It's not that at all. Um, it, it's it's a weirder situation because there were three unbeatens instead of just one, and ultimately, you know, it it, it just it's just a lot. You know, and I get it. I feel for Florida State. They deserved it. But so did Alabama, so did Texas. You know, if somebody was going to be mad. And Florida State right now, I don't know if you could I don't know if you could put that Florida State team in with the offense. The defense is excellent, but the offense, I don't know about all that. Um so yeah, the Orange Bowl, again, I'm not gonna be watching it looks like um, it looks like I'm kind of all tuckered out, and I'm just gonna skip straight to the playoff, you know, on January the first. So that's what I'm gonna focus on on January the first. Um, you have Georgia, Florida State again in the Orange Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl. will have Liberty, yes, unbeaten Conference USA champion Liberty in the Fiesta Bowl against the Oregon Ducks, and. And it, it, it's, it, it's certainly, you know, a lot of people had, you know, well, SMU should probably get in. But again, SMU has two losses. So, you know, don't understand the logic, you know, for a group of five. And if this, you know, was the 12-team playoff, would I personally be happy with this 12-team playoff? Yes and no. Yes because Georgia, you know, gets to prove themselves again because Florida State, you know, still unbeaten, they they get another they get another crack at it because they're actually unbeaten. Ohio State, yes. They 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 get they get another chance, you know. You know, even though the even though the Michigan game they lost the Michigan game, you know. You know, it, it again, it's a little weird. It's a little weird for Georgia and Ohio State themselves, but for teams like Missouri, Ole Miss, Penn State, Oregon, and no, no, no. These teams have two losses. These teams um, got boat raced um, for, for well, well, Missouri, you know, didn't really get boat raced, but Ole Miss, absolutely not. Penn State, absolutely not. I don't want to see these teams anywhere near contending for a national championship. But this is, but this, if this was our playoff for 12 teams, then, yeah, this would be our 12-team playoff. Um, you know. I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say at this point. I don't like the fact that we're going to 12 again. If we're going to expand, we need to expand to 8 first. But, again, it is what it is. I did try 12, but... Ultimately, it's fine. It's fine. College football, the CFP can do whatever they want because they're not affiliated with the NCAA. So, again, I don't, I don't know what else to really say, you know, about our New Year's Six slate because, again, this would be our 12-team playoff right here. There would be an Oklahoma who's gotten very hot. It would be in Arizona who has three losses. There would be, you know, an Iowa who has three losses. Thank goodness for that. Uh, even though they have a very good defense, Iowa has the best defense in the country. But just the worst, one of the worst offenses I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Whew. If only Iowa had a decent offense. If only, you know, that weird fear catch thing, you know, 
you know, wasn't a thing. That probably would have muddled things a little bit further in the whole New Year's Six thing. But ultimately, you know, there's a lot of what ifs that could have happened this year. But again, we have our four. Again, Alabama led by Jalen Milrow against J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, and the Michigan Wolverines. Again, Milrow has a solid cast around him. Isaiah Bond, you know, and the defense, you know, not as great as before, but still pretty good. Texas, of course, Quinn Ewers, you know, lost the loss of Jonathan Brooks was, you know, crazy. But again, with sweat on that defense, with the rest of the talent worthy, and, you know, probably not going to play in the Sugar Bowl. He might, but he might not. But again, the rest of that, that talent, Mitchell, Sanders, I mean, those two guys there, you know. Uh, again, the rest of that defense, just absolutely a unit, a real unit. Washington, you know, defense, shaky. Offense, not so much shaky, you know, with Michael Penix, with McMillan, Odunze, and, and, and Polk. You know, those three wide receivers right there, you know, and their running backs as well. So this is these two these two playoff games are going to be two dog fights. I'm expecting low scoring games in both of them. I really hope we get low scoring games. That's gonna that's gonna make people mad, but that's what I want. I want low scoring games. We're gonna get them, I hope. And I hope they're gonna be competitive. Of course, the last regular season game takes place this upcoming Saturday, the Army-Navy game yet again. These two teams will not be going bowling because, you know, teams got to pick their bowls. All the bowls are set. There, there was some weird wonky stuff because of Florida State getting left out with the ACC, bowl tie-ins and everything. But who cares about the rest of the bowl games? I personally do not care at this point about the rest of the bowl games. Um What's important is this final game of the regular season. The pageantry, the tradition, set it all aside. Of course, you know, I've been an Army guy supporting Army in this game because not for one. And I think I've told y'all the story before. The 2012 game, Trent Steelman, the fumble, in which Navy extended the streak. And of course, that was the first time Keenan Reynolds stepped on the field in the Army Navy game and he was and he was spectacular. This year's Navy not as good. This year's Army not as good with the new shotgun option. The the trying the Chip Kelly Urban Meyer spread. It hasn't really been working out for him. Again, neither of these teams can go bowling because you know they have to set bowls and stuff, you know, by you know, this past Saturday, you know, and everything like that. So the bowls have to be set by today, and neither of these two teams are going, and they're both five and six. An army has two FCS wins; they can't go. So, but this is the Super Bowl for these two teams right here. This is the national championship for these two teams right here in Army Navy. And last but not least, the FCS quarterfinals, a grueling, you know, first two rounds. Of course, all the lower seeds, you know, or rather, all the teams that did get seeded are gone. They're all gone. And again, the FCS has the same problems as the FBS, but nobody wants to say anything about that. Again, as you can, you know, tell, um, well, you can't really tell by this graphic, but every team except North Dakota State is seeded. All these teams are the seeded teams. You know, Montana State got beat by North Dakota State in a thriller. Probably they, these I think a lot of people were like, well, these two teams probably shouldn't have met in the second round, but they did anyway. So, you know. And of course, South Dakota State trying to continue their dominance as the top dog, you know, at the FCS, trying to win their second consecutive national title. Of course, my good friend, you know, who's a Albany Great Danes supporter, you have the Idaho Bandles, of course, who are also very good. They've been very good this year. Montana on a winning streak. Um, Furman, who won the SoCon, and again, the SoCon, again, I talked about the SoCon at the beginning of the season, how they, you know, they kind of persevered throughout the year, and again, Mercer was one of those teams that was kind of in it. They, they didn't get, they didn't get far, obviously, but these are our final eight, and 
one of these games will be on ABC. That will be that North Dakota State South Dakota game. The other two, um, the Villanova game against South Dakota State will be on ESPN. The Furman Montana game will also be on ESPN. All but the Idaho, you know, Idaho got their got their second round game televised on the ESPN network. So this this one against Albany will be on a streaming, you know, platform instead of you know being on TV. But it's okay. That 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 second round game being televised was actually good for the FCS. That's actually really really good for the FCS. And at this point, with the eight teams left, I'm still I'm still thinking we get you know. We're going to get South Dakota State in one of those. But the problem is, is figuring out the other team. And I don't know who. I really don't know who at this point. I forgot how the bracket shakes out. Um, yeah. Really, really good quarterfinals right here. So, you know, if the college football playoff were eight teams and it'd be like this, you know, I'd be very happy. But instead, we're going to 12. I don't like 12. I think I've made that very clear. And again, the SDS has the same problems. You know, they don't like, you know, the automatic qualifiers. They don't like, you know, you know the HBCUs don't like going to the SDS playoffs because the SDS playoffs doesn't make any money. And two, the, the anti-HBCU rhetoric is that the HBCUs are not competitive, which is also very much true still to an extent. But they're getting there. The, F, the HBCUs are getting there. North Carolina Central is an example of that. You know, they beat, you know, they beat a bunch of CAA teams and everything like that, but they lost to Richmond. So in in the uh, second, you know, in the first round, but yeah, Whew. man, what a season, man! What a season! I I'm excited to pretty much wrap this up because I'm going to wrap up my discussion of college football here. I'm going to wrap it up here and I will talk to you all about college football again come January the uh, the 8th. I think it's the 8th. It's either the 7th or the 8th. One of those days. <laughs> One of those. No, it's the 8th. Yeah, it should be the 8th. That will be the night of the CFP National Championship in Houston and, you know, We'll talk about who won the FCS playoffs. We'll talk about, you know, some of the bowl games and any other crazy things that happened. You know, also, well, um, we know players are going to be sitting out for some of these games. I expect guys like Marvin Harrison to sit out, Bo Nix to sit out. So, you know, a lot of guys are going to be sitting out for these bowl games and everything like that. So, y'all watch those bowls. I'm going to be focusing more on college basketball and lacrosse and everything like that as we you know get down into it so big boy is signing out and actually i will see you all on tuesday but for something completely different that's lacrosse related because i needed to i had a video ready for lacrosse but i, I didn't have the time this past weekend to really get it out so i'm gonna get I'm, i got y'all i got y'all for tuesday i got y'all for tuesday so and then the NFL, of course, on Wednesday, and then we'll keep going with the NFL and everything, and yada, yada, yada. We'll just keep going all the way until the Super Bowl with the NFL. So again, from our college football standpoint, I will see you all at the end of the season on January the 8th. Take care. If you're a Florida State fan and you're mad, go beat Georgia and split the, split the title. Go ahead and do a UCF and Auburn. A, uh, either, I think it was either USC or OU in 2003. Go ahead and do that. A 1997 Michigan, Nebraska. Do any of those examples, please. That's what we're asking of you, Florida State. So if you can do that for us, <laughs> then that'll be, that'll be absolutely funny. In any case, take care, everybody. And to all those that, you know, are in, congratulations. And for me, to the rest of the Horns Nation, hook them and go Horns. <laughs>